All right, guys, welcome to Get a Grip with Kendall Roosing. We're here with J. Rodriguez, otherwise known as J. Rod. And uh, unfortunately, I, I have to also announce him as Nikki Rod's little brother. <laughs> He's definitely not just that, but apparently, who put that on a screen one time? Flo? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's a ADCC trials winner, purple ball to B team, and Nikki Rob's brother yes. is what is what they know. <laughs> so, uh, so we're here, guys. I'm gonna announce. I'm gonna let you guys know a little bit about Jay in case you are not sure of all the things that he has done before we jump in and hear his opinion on having a grip on your life. So he's you're 20, right? Yeah. When's your birthday? February. Uh, 15th, yes. Oh, but almost 21. Yeah, okay. Almost, All right. Almost, almost party time. So 20, Purple Belly. I've been training jiu-jitsu for two years, um, although wrestled since you were super, super young. Yeah. And grew up in Jersey, trains a B team, and also the founder of and CEO of oh, Jitsbits, yes, yes, right? Yes, Tell yes, us a little bit yes, about yes, Jitsbits yeah. first before we get started. So Jitsbits is a uh, little company I made. A little um, company. A little company, yes. Seems to be big. Uh, so... Crocs have uh, like holes on the top of them and people put like little charms in them and there's no jujitsu theme charms. <laughs> so I, you know, took it upon myself to make some jujitsu theme themed uh, charms. Mm -hmm. So I've what are they? There's belts and what else? I've got a bunch of, a bunch of belts. I've got, uh, I did an image uh, of, uh, of me like grappling, like choking some guy. Nice. Um, I did cauliflower ear. The mm. shoe is literally over there. But, uh, oh, here! Can you hand me the shoes, Ola? We're gonna we're gonna dive into uh, oh, yes. level black has them yes, too. Yes, can I have the yes, other one? Yes. So oh, I do. Uh, we've got <laughs> my purple belt right here. We've got a uh, standing rear naked choke. We got uh, you know brands level black B team cauliflower ear. I love it. It doesn't get any better than this. Come on. We got all the kids belts yes. over here too. So kids all belts. your kids that have Crocs. Are you kidding me? These are cool. I need to order some of these too. Um, <laughs> I do have one pair of Crocs, only one. Mm. They have Yoda on them. They're from Disney World. Really only <laughs> bought them because my feet were really hurting on that day, and so I just got Crocs, and they're great. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> Okay, so obviously when you look at your resume, it's interesting because you have been so highly accomplished in jiu-jitsu at a really, really young age and also being really new to jiu-jitsu. So when you think, but one thing that I love and the reason that I, ha I wanted to have you on the podcast is because you're focusing on jujitsu, but you're also trying to look at treating yourself like a brand and doing a lot of other different things as well. So when you think about what it means for you to have a grip on your life as someone who's learning to do that very quickly and very young, what does that mean to you? Uh, well, I guess it's kind of hard to explain right <laughs> as of now, uh, but I have people like Nick and stuff to uh, guide me in the, in the right direction. Uh, even from like when I was wrestling, I always had Nick like just push me in the in the right way, and mm -hmm. uh, you know I always have my parents. Uh, You're pretty tight with them. There's my parents support. Um, mm. So yeah, I mean it's it's kind of hard to have a grip on life, like f fully understanding. I'm just yeah here for the ride. <laughs> here for the ride. Yeah. But I think that that's something in itself. It's like not overanalyzing exactly what like being present like yeah. you're not saying that word but the way you're describing yeah. it is how it sounds to me like being present making sure i'm supported trying to ask questions find the right direction yeah. and then kind of following the steps yeah, does that sure, sound right sure, yeah. okay cool i like it so why don't you give us about like a 10 minute version ish of your life story from baby days to how you got here where you are now okay so um i was born in philly and we moved to uh, Jersey, grew up in like a small town. Uh, I graduated with like 100 kids in my class. Oh, wow. Uh, it's yeah. tiny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and the wrestling team wasn't wasn't too good. So I, on top of just like uh, wrestling during the season, I, I had to go to like clubs and stuff to uh, really mm. get good. And uh, I started wrestling in el elementary school. So I had, to, wow. I had to be like six or seven years old. And... Um, just been on the mats ever since um is that you were doing club practices and stuff at six and seven then when you were in high school you kept doing that is what you're saying yeah yeah like so I, I kept i i started club like club wrestling probably more in like middle school and and okay. on um and that's when it like really got pretty serious i was just you know mm, you're that competing a lot became my life yeah but, why did uh, you wrestle like why did you choose that I we did a few sports like Nick bounced around to, from a lot of sports and he uh, got 
got stuck on wrestling. Mm. And uh, I remember I did football when I was really young and it didn't really stick. I really hated, um, I hate losing, <laughs> but I hate losing and it's not in my control. Like there's like other people on the uh, team and yeah. like, like, oh, this guy didn't catch the ball. Now, right. now we all lose. Right. right yeah. Right. I, I want to be in control. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> At least if I'm losing, I did yes, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I know what I did. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's no one really to blame except for myself. Mm. Um, and I really like that. So uh, that's what really stuck with me for, uh, for wrestling. Uh, for wrestling in, wrestling in high school, I had um, – at 136 wins, uh, wow. less than 20 losses, um, two-time district champ, two-time region mm-hmm. champ. It's really different where you guys, you're, where you're from. Yeah, right? in yeah. California, we have one state championship. Yeah, so well, we have one state championship, oh. but isn't your your thing like uh, it's CIF? Yeah, oh, we call it like okay. so. We have like CIF, but we have um, uh, league, and then we have CIF, mm-hmm. and then we have masters, and then state. So okay. it's like different, but it's I think it's the same kind of. Um, tiers of okay, like okay, all the way yeah, up to state yeah so two-time district champ two-time region champ nice i i won one region champ on or region title on uh uh torn meniscus that was oh my gosh was How, which year was that that was my junior year wow yeah and actually i lost the districts uh in the district finals that same year i lost in district finals wow in reg- regions yeah um and then i never placed in states but um, were you doing national like so in California, you have it's a little bit it's probably a little bit different. We have our like state team that goes to like the folk style nationals. And then we also have Fargo mm, and then there's freestyle. Did yeah. you do any of that stuff or you stayed? Like, I, in the state? I never really got in, into like uh, competing outside of mm. uh, uh, season like that often. Yeah, it was really just training like. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, I just Were you trying to go to college for wrestling or you didn't really know what you wanted. I didn't to? really know like I guess I wanted to go to college but I didn't know what I wanted to go to college for so it was really mm. just like just wrestling. Blinding. You're like I want to wrestle. Yeah, everyone's like, "Oh, you know, get good at wrestling, you get a scholarship, you go to college." Yeah. And uh yeah, but it's so exp- college is so expensive, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um so I think my my junior year or my senior my senior year, Nick was like started blowing up in in uh, jujitsu like immediately. Right. And right. I was it, like, his his switch was super yes, fast. Yeah, like yeah. zero to hundred. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I can do something. Yeah. <laughs> this, yeah. this was giving me hope. Um, <laughs> okay. But uh, yeah, I think my senior year, I had like pretty much like made up my mind. I was like, right after the wrestling season, I'm gonna mm. like jump right into jujitsu. Um, and then I think like a couple like one or two weeks after uh the season ha- had ended uh covid uh shut down like everything so oh <laughs> wow so right as you yes. finish wrestling you're yeah. like planning on this new career yes, exactly and yeah. the world ends mm-hmm. okay yeah. all right but uh yeah so basically just quarantine for a few months and then uh while quarantining I, w- I started working with my dad uh just to save up some money and stuff mm-hmm. and um and then I started training at Studio Studio Eighty Four with uh, Jay Regabuto. Yeah, yeah, and I love um, him. yeah, yeah, he's he's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started training there. I trained there for about about a year, I guess. And then uh, then I came to Austin when uh, the DDS split. I was gonna say because where because Nick was in, uh, he had already moved at that time. I don't uh, remember when they went. So they went like they went. I guess like a, Nick had his tour and they went probably about a year into uh, me training at, at a studio, like right, like towards the end of a uh, mm-hmm. uh, studio being like a thing. Cause it, they had uh, closed down. Yeah. But uh, yeah, probably uh, nine months to, to a year. Um, they went from Puerto Rico to Austin. To, no, no, no. They went from, um, they went from New York to, to, Puerto, to Puerto Rico. Rico. Yeah, that's and right. That's right. That's okay. when like things started. Uh, I guess whatever happened over there. Yeah. <laughs> and then they getting split spicy. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> okay, makes sense. And then they came to Austin. So when they came to Austin, that's when you came to Austin. Yeah, yeah. So I I had actually gone to Puerto Rico, and uh, I went to train with them. Um, and I trained like one or two days, and John didn't uh, want me training with them. Um, so oh, this okay. is, this is, uh, this is really frustrating. So, yeah. um, 
back when I was wrestling, this is going to turn into a whole fucking thing. That's okay. I want, I want yeah. the thing. I like the thing. <laughs> I like to know. But so, well, just to clarify, you had been training jiu-jitsu like nine-ish months. Yeah. Right? And yeah. then you went to Puerto Rico, and you're yes. obviously wrestling your whole life. You get there, and then you're like not feeling welcome to train. Is that? Mm-hmm. Okay. So the moment I got there, like there was already like – I don't know, it was just weird. It didn't feel like like some very, tension, kind of, yeah, 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 something, yeah. But uh, I I was like, ah, it's just like all these new people, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But uh, like I trained there two or three days, and then on like the third day, uh, Gordon told me I I couldn't train with them, okay. and um, so basically, back when they were in New York, I was wrestling, and they had asked Nick about how I was doing uh okay. in like regions or whatever, and at the time I had Impetigo, mm. and um. Nick was like, oh, like he's he's undefeated, whatever, but he's got like herpes. Oh, my jokingly. Gosh. <laughs> and uh, John, well, that's just kind of how wrestlers not, talk. Yes, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. But John did not like that. So, <laughs> so he actually still he thinks I have uh, herpes. So he was like, oh, yeah, he can't, oh, no. he can't train with us. Can't to this day, he thinks that. I mean, I guess so. I don't oh, talk my to gosh. The guy. I've never talked to him. I've said like hi once or twice. Oh, but, my yeah, gosh. Yeah. But, um, Did you have a return ticket from Puerto Rico? No, I, I so I went there to help Nick uh, like move in. So mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I'll just like I'll yeah, be there yeah. for like one or two weeks, help him move in, whatever. Also train yeah. with the best yeah. grapplers in the world. Why not? Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I was not welcome there, so I oh just left gosh. soon after. Yeah, man. Okay, so you when you came home, mm-hmm. then you were still training at Jay's, or yes, yeah. So okay. the moment the moment I got home, searching with Jay again, and then. Uh, I guess they were there for a while, right? They yeah. Were, maybe I don't year. remember. Maybe I a year. I not remember. I don't know. Um, God, that's like, it's weird. It seems like a lifetime yeah, ago because yeah. during COVID, everything yeah. was so upside down yeah. too. And where you guys were at, like, man, New York and Jersey, mm-hmm. it was so, I know everything was so bad, locked down. Yeah. yeah, it was it was ridiculous. So how did you make the transition into, because you hadn't competed in jiu-jitsu yet then, right? I had COVID. Com- the, like sm- small stuff, like, or... I guess like I've competed all my life, but not in jiu-jitsu. Right, that's so. what I mean. So, because you're wrestling forever, yeah. but then as soon as you start doing jiu-jitsu, COVID happens. So you're yeah. training, and then by the time they come back to Austin, had you been competing a lot yet, or that was kind of the start? Of it things? was just like small stuff. I okay. would compete like locally, like Naga, uh, New Breeds, whatever. But right, it was right. nothing crazy. What were you thinking when you were training jiu-jitsu in the beginning there with Jay, like? Were you seeing, I mean, it's hard because you weren't competing enough to be testing your progress against the best people in the world, but you knew you were talented, right? I mean, what was the, the thought process there? So my main issue was I I thought to myself, I was like, Nick did what he did because he's in such a, uh, he's at heavyweight. Mm. Like, it's going to be so hard for anyone to uh, win trials at, oh, at a year yeah. um, of training but uh, I guess I ended up doing it. But, <laughs> but initially, I was like, what I'm doing is impossible. Like, my goal mm. is impossible. I should just stop now. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I really, I didn't think I was going to be capable of doing it. Even, like, at trials. Like, <laughs> the, I just, I told uh, Ethan to, today, I was like, because uh, they were talking shit. Um, <laughs> I told them, the driving to the second day of, of trials, I was like, I, I'm going to lose. Wow. And it's okay. It's okay. Like I was like comfortable with losing. I was like, there's no possible way wow. I'm, I can win. At West Coast, the one that As, you won, yeah, right? At West Coast Charles. I was wow. like, yes, I'm going to lose. That's I'm crazy. Lose, yes. What did you think going into the first day? First day, I was like, I had like a decent seat. So I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll beat do a few right. people, whatever. Yeah. yeah. But second day, I was like, I'm also going to beat a few people. Who did you I'm fight first lose. first day? I'm sorry, first match of second day? Like who first was your match coming match second, that day? I think it was, I think it was Tim Welch. Okay. I think uh, that's uh, Sean Sean O'Malley's coach. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so and then so your match is on the second day. You're looking at the bracket, thinking you're going to lose. Who mm-hmm. were? Did you have anyone in particular? You're like, oh, I'm going to have to fight X, Y, and Z, or was mm-hmm. it just like I don't think I'm going to be able to win? Yeah, this? I didn't. I didn't look at. I never look at brackets. Still. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Still, yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I can't just to study people. I can't. <laughs> Does do Nick that look at it and kind of like? Prepare you for I stuff? No, no, nah, nah, Nick doesn't do that either. Yeah. We just walk in blindly. Yeah. All right. The thing is, for me, I don't know about Nick, but for me, it's like if I 
if I study someone and I worry about uh, like what they're going to do, mm-hmm. that's all I'm going to think about the entire match. Like I'm just going to think about what this guy, like what kind of shot this guy's going to do. And yeah. I was like, I did that one time in, in wrestling and yeah, I lost. Yeah, I lost. I was like, I can't. I but can't do you lose. like if someone who's coaching you looks at things and kind of like maybe has one or two things like, Hey, just make sure you try to go here or stay. Yeah. I guess yeah. that's what I meant. Like, does Nick look for you if he's going to coach you or if someone else is coaching you? It's really just like, uh, like a general like broad idea like okay this guy's gonna mm. pull guard this guy's gonna do like entanglements it's like right, okay right. got it i Makes know what's work now but uh yeah that's that's really i don't want to do like specific stuff it's it, it gets complicated yeah i don't have to move in jujitsu so, yeah. like, <laughs> as it is you know i got you yeah. so okay so you're <laughs> so you come home from puerto rico they you're there you're training doing your thing you don't really like you're thinking your dream is impossible then they move to austin so once they're in austin and they split up they have two separate teams b team gets started did you come here immediately yeah i came yeah actually like the moment nick drove down uh he got he got to his his place and he was like okay when are you coming yeah <laughs> and i was like Okay, I guess I'm coming now. Yeah, yeah. I Did he know talking. that you had, like, were you guys talking all the time about, like, okay, my dream is to win, like, I want to do what you did, I want to win the trials, or was that just your own private thing? Yeah, it was, it was really just, like, I mean, I guess we both kind of knew, like, mm-hmm. we all have the same goals, mm-hmm. I guess, but, uh, yeah, we didn't really talk about it too much, it was just, like, <laughs> go do it, you know? Yeah, 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 I got you. So you show up here, and then what happened? I came here, started training, I'm getting messed up by Craig, Isaac, <laughs> uh, Ethan, and Nikki Ryan are hurt. Nikki Rod was also hurt at the time, so he mm. couldn't train. But um, yeah, started training with them. And then, God, I guess about maybe about six months in, uh, or no, I guess uh, East Coast Trials. East, East Coast Trials happened. Uh, that was I November. Lost, yeah. yeah, I lost. Um, I think first round of second day. Okay. So it was like the round of 32 maybe or 16. Okay. But um, yeah, to, and I got heel hooked and that was like, I was like. Who'd you lose to that day? It was, do I don't remember? know. I don't know. I, yeah. <laughs> Dang, yeah. You really don't look at the bracket. No, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So what were you, so what were you thinking after that loss? You're like, man, I didn't even meddle and I thought I yeah, might try so to win. Like, get, get back to work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> I got heel hooked and I was like, okay, I know like I had this issue yeah. and uh, I have Craig. So it's like, mm. and uh, everyone I beat team like is really, really uh, just know so much. Uh, yeah. If you ever have like a, a, a problem in any position, like mm. someone is going to have something for like you. encyclopedias around yes. you. Yeah. Yes. And you had five months or four ish months after that to yeah. get ready for West Coast. Yeah. So when you're thinking about preparing for West Coast, was it more about the reason I'm about to ask this is because the way that you won, if you guys haven't watched, you should go back and watch some of the matches because I was really, it's something that I looked at a lot when I was getting ready for ADCC because I was limited due to injuries. And the way I saw you win was doing the same sequence of things over and over and over. I was like, man, that worked super well. If I can do that in ways that avoid this. So anyway, I studied yeah. some of your matches and what I noticed is you look so different than East coast because it seemed to me like you had this very specific plan with all of your fights. So in that four month period, were you really focused on like, okay, I need to work on the like leg, leg entanglement defense, or was it all about, let me get to this one offense and do that over and over. So right after losing, um, also, I lost to Taza around that time as well. I okay. lost in like fucking 45 seconds. So <laughs> uh, it was like a known issue for me. So right. I immediately started started working on, on that stuff, like just uh, being competent all around in that leg entanglement area. Mm-hmm. So like I like I feel like even in 50-50, it's like you get to that position. It's like it's so like it's just a battle. And um, I just want to. I got to the point where I was comfortable in these situations. I knew where I'm safe and I know where I'm not safe. Mm-hmm. So uh, once I got to that level, I was like, okay, I feel like now I can neg- negate most of these, uh, you mm. know, most of the dangerous situations with this stuff. So uh, right. then I started working on like how to take the back, how to like properly get hooks in, how to like knock your opponent down to a hip and stuff. Cause this stuff is so important, so mm. important. And especially for ADCC, cause like, Taking the back is so difficult. And yes. Getting ports, points in ADCC is so difficult. But uh, yeah, with the guys I beat him, it's like, it's 
it's you're so gonna helpful. be super sharp, right? Yeah, yeah because yeah. if you're doing it on them, then you can be maybe yeah. do it on anybody in the world. So when walk us through a little bit your entry into ADCC West Coast Trials, you're walking. I know you said second day you went in not even thinking that you were gonna win, but with so actually a funny story. I remember backstage, so I didn't really I had seen you around with Nick, but I didn't really know who you were and and backstage in West Coast Trials. Nick said hello and I was talking and then I saw he was like <laughs> I was like oh are you competing and you were like yeah and then Nick kind of looked at me like I was stupid and I was like oh shit <laughs> then you won the whole fucking tournament and then I was like god damn it dude, I feel so bad <laughs> well now I know who you are yeah. <laughs> but anyway man you <laughs> you had this incredible tournament you basically did the same thing every single match so like when you went into a match what was your not just your game plan but what was like the end goal well ultimately control and then submit like that's just mm-hmm. what i wanted to do i didn't really care how i submitted uh, my opponent but it just so happened to be <laughs> very naked choke <laughs> six times but uh yeah uh take the back like it's pretty simple take your opponent down uh get hooks in and submit them like, yeah that's that's it that's it just do it yeah just, just do, do it, it. Yeah, come on yeah. <laughs> get with the program yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but AD, adcc like it leads to uh taking the back like happening much more often because people are like if you pass someone's guard they're mm. going to turtle so it's like okay right. how do you attack from turtle so it just opens up other better ways to to get to the back yeah it seemed to me like most of your success at west coast trials came from exploiting the turtle position yeah yeah yeah, for sure yeah amazing so you win the trials then your life's basically turned upside down it seemed like from the outside and you had this huge target on your back now and what was the leading going into adcc i mean when that happened i know you had been an athlete your whole life so you're used to winning you're kind of used to the spotlight in some capacity but especially as things started to grow on social media and you're doing interviews you're working with slow grappling now like what was that transition like for you leading up to adcc did it feel like a lot of pressure did it feel like this is what i was made for or you just didn't care or like what was that experience like yeah i just didn't care that much to be honest <laughs> it's it's like yes it's it's a big deal and uh like I feel like it's it's nice lo- looking back at all that stuff happening, mm-hmm. but it's um, in the moment you can't really have emotions towards these yeah. things because it's gonna affect like uh, how you compete and stuff like like that. So, what do you think goes wrong when people do get really obsessed with that, or when it does feel emotional? I don't know. Some some people get comfortable, or some people just let it take over their their you know their thinking. I guess their and focus, like, right? Yeah, yeah like yeah. they're focusing on that and not the training. Yeah, or- I, can't have that. Yeah. Can't have that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you have people talking to you about it or it was just natural for you to be like, okay, here's the mission? Yeah, it's just natural for me. It's like it if you look at competing like it's the same like competing, it is what it is. Like it's just the same uh I always have the same like mentality of walking into mm. it. Like every match is the same. Every is match is the same. Like I not that I don't want or not that I'm like fine with losing, but like mm-hmm. I'm comfortable with the worst possible outcome happening and then like let's work from that rebuilding from there exactly yeah so yeah that helps a lot honestly yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) and like most of my matches I'm I'm like I'm supposed to lose like Mm. even when I'm like the favorite like I was the favorite for uh the couch match like Mm -hmm. there's no way yeah there's no way come on come on like a wrestler versus like uh uh, a black belt now, yeah. Um, like leg locker, like one mm-hmm. of the best in the world. That's just. That's Did you matter. think you weren't going to win that match going in? Um, I thought I was going to win, uh, but <laughs> so so <laughs> yes. Let's talk about that. <laughs> so right, but be- I blame this on Craig. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so right before, uh, I don't I don't study my opponents. Right, right. So uh. Right before, <laughs> in the back room, I'm like warming up, stretching out, whatever. And Chris like, "Oh, mate, uh, Couch lost, lost to, uh, he lost to uh, Giancarlo." And I'm like, "Oh, how did, how did he lose?" And he's like, "Dude, he by like passed and took his back string guard." I'm like, "By like pass? Yeah, let's I go. By like pass? I can do this." <laughs> I locked up by lock, and I was like, "Oh, this is not good. This is not good." <laughs> He was But you so were in the strong. clothes guard. You yes, were in the clothes yeah. guard. I think so, John Carlo passed like butterfly half. Yeah. So the thing is when you're by like passing, you have to have uh butterfly uh butterfly hooks uh-huh. pinching his heels to his butt. But I was pitching his heels for like a split second and then he just explodes and locks oh, up clothes guard. Okay. And I'm like, 
okay, this is safe. Let me posture up. I go to posture up, and he has like an overhook on my arm. I'm like, that's not gonna. That's go not out. good. That's not getting out. <laughs> so I was like, all right, let me just kind of like play around, see if uh, I can I like slowly get out of here. And then, uh, yeah, I got swept, and then he just held me there for the mile, fucking yeah. ten minutes. It was yeah. rough. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Mount for oh my god, the guys tortured me for with mount rounds after that. It was <laughs> Horrific. How does your mountain escape feel now? Uh, it's good now. <laughs> I got an instructional on it. <laughs> but yeah. I love it. I, love yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember, man, right after trials, you put out uh, an instructional, like, mm-hmm. what is it called? The It was like, oh my God. So I just, I didn't even choose the titles. Are you serious? Because yes, the yes. title was funny. Yes. It was like, how to like tap higher belts or yeah, something. Right? Oh so my good. God. <laughs> the, I told him, I was like, oh, like how to get good fast, like simple. Oh They're my like, God. How to tap higher belts. I was like, it's marketable. Okay. Yeah. It, yeah. And it's sure. what you did. Yeah. 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 yeah I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Well, I gave you too much credit. I thought you came up with it. <laughs> that was pretty good. I was like, I yeah. was like, I bet Nick told him to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Nick would have been. That sounds like, like that. something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah he would <laughs> put out there. So, okay. So you're having all. <laughs> all this big momentum, uh, who's number one, ADCC, all this stuff happening. How did you feel going into ADCC? What was your performance like as far as like your perception of it? And then how did it feel after? So I have this issue where I'm kind of a slow starter mm-hmm. and I almost win my close matches. I almost win them within the last 30 seconds of every single match. Mm. Like I'm like, I don't know. It's just like I get going like at the end of it. Yeah, I have a yeah. really good gas tank so I can last a really long time. And uh, usually I'm able to like turn it up when the guys are like slowing mm. down. But it's something you see with wrestlers a lot where it's like you like wrestlers have that where we learn and we're taught. Well, it's at a necessity. It's like you get it through the being in the fire yeah. in the room and stuff. But yeah. you're able to pull things out in the last 30 seconds. And I don't know if we're usually taught to do that in a strict jujitsu sense. So yeah. I think when you come in jujitsu with little jujitsu experience, like being able to pull that out, it shocks people. They feel like they're drowning at the end. But if you're behind by too much or if you have someone who's super experienced, then obviously then they're doing those same kind of things that can be difficult yeah, to rely on. It's... I don't know. It's it's unique for sure, especially with there's a lot of things with wrestling, but I think one of the main things that carried over to jujitsu is just mindset overall, mm-hmm. like the toughness. Yes, yeah. the mental toughness. That's like the biggest difference, and you don't see that a lot in jujitsu. People like only like the top guys like mm-hmm. have like some some you know mental toughness, but. Whereas in a wrestling room, it's like you have to have that to survive. Yes. Yeah. Like yeah. in jujitsu, it's not to say like I want to make it clear so people don't get super angry. It's not that there aren't tough guys and girls in jujitsu. Like yeah. like you said, the top the top ten percent or the top people that are competing, you have to, or else you're not going to succeed. But in a wrestling room, you're pretty much not going to survive on the team unless you develop it because people are just going to eat you alive. That's why so many people quit. Like you don't really. It's sink or swim. And in jiu-jitsu, you can kind of like find places in the room to rest or relax or like compete casually, which is okay. I mean, that's why adults can do yeah. it without, you know, yeah. getting injured and dying all the time. But um, but it does shock people like when you're going with them and they're like, well, not yeah. used to feeling that. Yeah, you got to bring some sort of intensity. Or yeah. You're not, not going to go anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So ADCC, you know you have this gear that you can access at any time. What was it like going into your first match? So Who did you have your first match again? I had Pedro. Oh, yeah. that's right. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I had a pretty, pretty fun match with Pedro. Um, I know that, well, I didn't know this before, but Craig's like, boy, mate, he's, he's got a good guillotine. <laughs> so, uh, I was like noted. That's all I knew. I didn't know anything else. <laughs> so, uh, and the whole match, he's pretty much just standing straight up and I'm like, he's waiting for me to, to shoot. shoot. To well, and everyone knows neck. you. Yeah. Everyone knows you're wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of like shooting like blast doubles or uh i don't know just norm- normal stuff i was doing more like snatch singles to try to off balance him mm-hmm. and it worked like one or two times but uh no points were scored and uh we get into a couple scrambles i almost scored i almost <laughs> scored early on on the match and then um he takes me down and passes my guard mm. and then immediately uh breaks uh stands up and then um like later, later, there's like 30 seconds left. And uh, he's, uh, I'm coming, like coming towards him. He posts a uh, double, I spe- specifically, <laughs> this, this haunts me. He posts a uh, double, double things and fucking wrestling is like double, Pop double up wide, wide block yeah. and mm-hmm. just, 
and I ran through. I get uh standing standing body lock at like perfect position, just like yeah. put him on, put him down on the mat, and then uh we ended out uh, out of bounds. Ruff brings us down uh, uh to in. the center of the mat, and then and uh, they were gonna start the match with no body lock, and I'm oh, like, oh, wow. I, I want that. Give me that. <laughs> Give me the body so, lock. So yeah, so I get body lock, and then uh, I bring him down the mat. I get two, so I'm down by one point, and then uh, I'm stuck. Yeah, or I start body lock passing, <clears throat> and I'm stuck in, uh, what is it, three-quarter mount? Mm-hmm, I'm stuck mm-hmm. in three-quarter mount, and I'm like, oh, this is not how it ends. stuck, yes, yeah. My, I'm literally in mount, and just my just foot is stuck. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, this they, they fucking pulled me off. Oh. off and I was like, no. <laughs> so that's how it ended. Yes, yeah. Man, yeah, that's so, so rough. Close. Yeah. Okay, so finishing ADCC, you're like, okay, one of the best guys in the world. I mean, at the time, he was the current double gold Nogi world champion, and you had this amazing match. What were your thoughts after? I mean, I know uh, West Coast Trials, you didn't think you were going to win, <laughs> but then you won, and now you're like, I'm going to ADCC. I, this is the whole thing I wanted to do a couple of years ago when I started training jiu-jitsu. Pretty unheard of outside of your brother to like come into ADCC with such little jiu-jitsu experience. <laughs> What became your mindset after ADCC as far as your goals or training and what your your eyes are on now? Uh, well, my first thought after the match was um, I'm better than Craig because Craig lost to Pedro by two <laughs> or, or three points. I Hell lost yeah. Him, so I'm basically better than Craig Jones. Pretty much. Aside from that, uh, I'm really just <laughs> – right now I'm focusing on – I don't have any uh, competitions uh, scheduled or anything. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to get better at, at – uh, certain things like specific things like tying in a uh, high step passing by like passing together yeah. with uh, this other pressure passing that I've been working with um, a lot as along with other things really just not worrying worrying about getting in like competition shape yeah I just want to get better because so many people are I'm just like I'm so close I'm so close yes. in every match I feel like I'm so close but even like my Giancarlo match I feel like ADCC rules, like I, I did win that match, but it wasn't ADCC rules. It was, it right. was, uh, um, subversive rules, right? Or, or subversive, but it was also a uh, flow as well. Oh, yeah. You yeah. guys went, you went yeah. twice. You had subversive yes. and then flow, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. So, God, I'm so close. Dude, good for him, though. He yeah. Wins. He's been killing it. Yeah. He's yeah. Been killing That's it. crazy. That's yeah. crazy. Well, it's funny because I, so I'm working with Subversive now, and I remember during our last show, we were talking about you and Nick, and we were thinking about having you guys on, and um, and we were talking about how you'd said, like, hey, like, I really want to be on, but I'm going to just focus on training right now. I'm going to put competitions kind of on the back seat just for the moment. I, I think this is so valuable to talk about because athletes don't really ever take time to do this, and I think that there are a couple of reasons, and I'm curious about yours too, but one of my opinions on this and actually something that I've experienced and done and probably made the mistake of is feeling the need to stay relevant. And mm-hmm. it's like, I have to keep putting myself out there. I have to keep yeah. getting on shows, have to keep competing or else, you know, like the rankings are going to change yeah. or people aren't going to be watching me. They're not going to know who I am. So when it comes to that, how did you find, I don't know if courage is the right word, but I think it is maybe discipline to be like, Hey, like this is the decision I need to make right now. Did other people help you or what was the thought there? Well, there's there's pros and cons to both like like you said uh it's either you continue competing and you stay in front of the eyes of everyone Mm -hmm. your you know your value stays up or you kind of like sharpen up your tools stay away from competition but also people start to forget about you Uh, but uh i feel like if you're capable or if you're really putting the time in to the point where you're like really getting better um, that then when you come back to competition, it's going to be even, mm. even worth more the than long term game. Exactly. Higher. Yes. So, uh, sacrificing some, some time away from, from, uh, you know, the viewers for your worth and really is, ego really. Yes, yeah. It's yeah. like sacrificing a little bit of that ego boost that I get yeah. every time I'm going out and competing. Yeah. Mm. yeah I mean, I've, I even in like, since I started jujitsu, I really haven't competed like too, too much. My competition like kind of picked up a little bit after trials because mm-hmm. uh, you know all that happened. But right, right. Aside from that, it's really just kind of like slow. Like I'm really just been trying to get better for two years. Yeah, I've been playing catch up yeah. for so long. <laughs> like every room that I that I train in, you know, there's always even back in studio. Like back in studio, I was training with John Combs. I was training with Keith Kikorian. I was training mm. with uh, like other local like really good guys yeah so um I, I was always playing catch up like 
Keith will take my back, that bastard. <laughs> he was so, he's like a little monkey. Yeah. And then, oh my God, like me just being like, Russia just want to like yeah. take you down and John Collins just snatching up the guillotine. It's like, teams, it yeah. was so rough. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. Mm, so, okay. So now you're focusing, that kind of brings us current as far as the life story goes. So you're focusing on training. You're looking at getting these specific uh, positions better and mm -hmm. just getting better overall. When you think about all these changes, I mean, you're 20 years old and I remember when I was 20, I think I got my black belt at 21. So I was like still a brown belt kind of um, starting to make waves, but not really knowing what the career was going to look like. So you're super young. You moved away from home. You're in this new state. You've been here for a little bit of time now. How do you, what is your view or your opinion on importance of finding like peace, groundedness, happiness? Like what does success as far as peace among these big transitions look like to you at a young age? Like what do you find are the most important things? Like, is it community? Is it routine? Is it staying close with family? Is it, uh, you know, you starting your new business, like having outside focuses, hobbies, like what does that look like to you to make sure you stay happy through all these changes? Well, I think, uh, being close with your training partners makes, makes, uh, work easier. Like at the mm -hmm. end of the day, like this is how I'm alive, like how I make money, how I put yeah. food on the table. So, uh, also I would not be able to live here if it wasn't for Nick. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I live with him. I, I pay him like a little bit of rent, but it's like, <laughs> I would not be where I am if it wasn't for my brother, if it wasn't mm -hmm. for my family, uh, you know, allowing me to uh, do this, like have this crazy dream. Right. Um, so staying close to family is, is huge. I have to call my mom every day or else she'll kill me. Um, <laughs> That's sweet. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, Do you have a specific time where you yes, just got to call? Yes, yes, yes. Right after training. Wow. Yeah, the that... moment I get home, yes. Good for her. <laughs> All right. She's like, my baby's 20 yeah. and he's yeah. out there. Like, you got to know what he's doing. Yeah. It's got to be uh, scary for a mom because both of you guys left too. Yeah, it's just yeah. the two of you guys? It's uh, the two of us and then we have a younger sister. She's okay. she's back at home. And she's home. Okay. Yeah. But, so you um, got a time you got to call. So, man, that's good. You got some built-in mentorship yeah, there yeah. whether you like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, staying close with with family, uh, enjoying your 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 job, you mm. know. Um, being at B-Team makes it so much uh, fun. Like Ethan and Damien just – talk shit all day long and it's so <laughs> funny to be around um Eth or uh, nikki ryan you know he's trying to kill me every day yeah. uh but it's, it's just a healthy environment and that's what you want to be around yeah. um like remember how i mentioned it in puerto rico like it was just i can't imagine like being in that environment just didn't feel every good, right? day that that's just like draining mm. but um yeah i mean we have other things we do we go mountain but Nikki Rod and I got uh mountain bikes. We mm. got some uh there's a lot of trails around here, so yeah. We go mountain biking. Yeah, I was gonna say, how often do you do stuff that's not jujitsu? Like do you think that it's important to do that or it's uh I don't think it's important, but uh I don't know. It's just another workout that's like actually mm. fun. Like mm. jujitsu is, is fun, but sometimes it can be like mentally exhausting. Yeah. But uh yeah, mountain biking's another another thing we do to like I don't know, I guess get away a little bit, but to Nikki Rod, it's just another workout. Yeah. <laughs> but, do you uh, lift together? Do you lift, uh, do you do his lift stuff? So I haven't lifted in a, in a while. Nick also hasn't been lifting like as, as much. I'm going to tell but, him uh, that. Okay. <laughs> he was going to kill me. But, uh, he, He's uh, like, that's my marketing, man. Come on. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's really all we do. We play like call duty here and there yeah really yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so it's man it's like the training environment what would you say to somebody who's trying to it's funny actually we talked to um cody and william a little bit about mm -hmm. this because they were talking about how important it is with your community your training partners holding each other accountable you have fun together you have these unbreakable bonds and i asked them the same question if you have these like say you have people listening to this are like really i really want to be a jiu-jitsu athlete or i love i love training i want to compete i want to be better but i just don't feel like I have that bond with my, with my people. Like, mm. do you find that that's something more like a self-responsibility? Like maybe I'm not being the teammate that I want to have, or are you just in the wrong environment or is it a mix of both? Like what can people do to figure that out? I feel like yes and no. Like some, some people just don't click and mm -hmm. there's like, I don't know, there's not really like a, I don't know, it just doesn't click sometimes. Yeah, not something wrong. It's just yeah, not the right mix, yeah. right? Some, sometimes uh, like when you walk into a gym and like, 
you automatically feel tension and there's like com- like a competitive competitiveness mm, like edgy yes yeah. some people aren't really like open to uh i don't know they're just not really open to like other things or like learning and stuff mm. but like when i when i do something wrong like the guys are like oh this this and this mm. or like if you know you're doing something wrong uh they're like more than more than welcome to like you can just walk up to them and ask mm. them and some people like you ask some people in other gyms, they're like, oh, I can't tell you that. Like, Oh, yeah, weird. Yeah. Yeah, You've it's... never had that happen? Um, I don't know if it's ever happened to me in particular. Yeah. I've heard horror stories of oh, that, yeah, but yeah. I don't know if I've you drink... don't, You're too good. You don't ask people. Oh, people. my gosh. That's not true. <laughs> no, I ask a lot of questions. But maybe... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe people are nice to me because I'm a girl. Yeah, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not sure. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, I, but I, I get what you're saying. It's an interesting it's an interesting dynamic when you think about people that hold you accountable at a very, very high level, but there's a two way like receiving, uh, there's a two way energy on that. So it's not like a mean offensive power play of like, you're doing this. I need to tell you what you're doing wrong. Cause it's like, Hey, I'm telling you this because I expect you to do the same for me. So it takes the emotion out of it. Right. Yes. Is that how it feels for you guys? Yeah. It's, it works both ways. Like Mm. Given they're not asking me, come to me for you know, <laughs> many questions unless I've I've got some tricks up my sleeve. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's good though. It's it's I can't imagine training anywhere else. Mm, I see. I love it. Um, okay, cool. So I'm really excited. I want to ask you. Okay, well, first you may not know the answer to this question. Do you plan on having kids one day? Oh. <laughs> we took a turn, but there's a reason why. <laughs> okay, I don't know. I mean, that's so expensive <laughs> and so much work it's a lot of work it's a lot of and work. a lot of money i don't know i can't imagine having kids anytime soon yeah but um I don't know. well I okay so yeah. whether it's you know your kids grandkids you're the cool uncle you mm-hmm. got cats yes, or whatever yes, it is yeah. it's okay be dogs. It's be dogs. <laughs> wait what did you say dogs dogs yes. oh not cats we're dogs. anti-cats i mean not anti-cats but oh, i all right. prefer dogs, dog yeah. preferred uh, pre- that's that's not the right <laughs> so let's check my english dog preferred no yes. see it was right it's just the wrong pronunciation <laughs> okay dog preferred so when you're th- when you're thinking about looking back and there will be more highlights to come for sure you're so young you have so much amazing stuff ahead of you but right now when you're thinking about the highlights that you want to tell people someday or the stories the memories what comes to mind is like man i'm super proud of this or this was super dope um I guess it's really like it's really just trials. That's like the only thing I've ever won. <laughs> well, I gotta win to be something. A big else. Win more so, like man, this was really impactful for mm-hmm. me. It could be trials for sure. Okay, I guess yeah, winning trials was a turning point. But I guess aside from that, um, so before trials, uh, do you remember the the Who's Next show? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. I lost first round to Renee Souza mm-hmm. by buggy choke. I buggy oh choke. my god and at the time right. i was like at the time i was playing around with the buggy choke yeah. but i wasn't like super aware mm-hmm. and uh, after that i was like okay i literally cried my heart oh. out to the camera i was crying mm. i could barely talk i was crying so hard oh my god and um yeah i i went home i was like what am i doing why am i doing like mm-hmm. why am i here right now this is fucking pointless mm. but uh yeah right right back to work I'm like start learning like much more about the buggy choke. Uh, Craig starts playing with it, so it's like mm-hmm. someone else is hitting it on me. And now I like <clears throat> I have a book like full of stuff like all about the buggy choke. There's wow. so much stuff. You have an instructional on yes, it, right? Yeah, yeah, I just released it uh, a couple of weeks ago, but uh, that was like the making of 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 the buggy choke that i hit at uh trials mm. that was like what i was losing to uh uh hunter mm-hmm. and like he's like sweeping me and i'm really just surviving off of threatening the buggy choke yeah and one ended up like being on and uh, i won but it's like if i didn't have that if i didn't lose to renee yeah i was like i would what was i gonna do <laughs> you know mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. um I guess that was kind of like a, a little turning point. Yeah. yeah. No, it's big. It's so funny, man. I have this, uh, you know, Franklin Sula. I have this, this blue belt kid at our mm-hmm. gym that always tries to buggy choke oh. me because of you oh. all the time. He's like, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> at the trials. I'm like, you started this phenomena of buggy <laughs> chokes around the world. It's horrible. It's, it works. <laughs> it works. 
or the but secrets. But <laughs> there's there's a lot of stuff uh, that play a factor. Yeah, so basically, buy my instructional, and then you. <laughs> buy, that's right. <laughs> buy the instructional, yeah. then you get to know the details. <laughs> so this may be the same answer, but I'm but I want to ask like a time that you look back that you felt maybe had some darkness to it or is really frustrating or hard that you look back now and you're like, man, I wouldn't change this. This was really fucking difficult, but I wouldn't change it because here's what I learned through it. Is yeah. it the same or you have a different time? I think, yeah, I really don't have many like dark, dark moments per se. Mm. I've just been working so hard, <laughs> but like, that's really, it. that was, that was the rough <laughs> time. Like that was really hard for me. Cause I was like, okay, like this is it. I'm on this, this mm. like new show. This is going to be big. This is the moment. This is All the, the moment. That's a lot of pressure. Yes. Right? I mean, like, I wasn't like feeling pressure, but I'm like, this, like this, the time is now. Yeah. Like, well, you're, you, <laughs> you may not just like define it as pressure in the moment, but yeah. it feels so big yes, yeah, that yeah. you are, it's a big weight. Even yeah. though you don't realize you're under yeah. this weight, it's like you kind of created the weight. Yeah. I felt so good too. It was only like a two or three minute match. Yeah. And I was like, by like passing, took his pack one or two times mm. he, he like retained guard oh my god it's almost me <laughs> but uh yeah that's hard it's like lives in your body yes, those ones yeah. they're horrible yeah. mm. so when you're <laughs> so when you're thinking about like this is one of the biggest questions i get a lot for athletes from fans is what goes on behind the scenes that fans don't see i mean what is like i know that you're saying that you're like well i'm not putting all this pressure but between like weight cutting, um, being away from home, people have a lot of different mental health struggles. Like what goes on that you're like, okay, here's my Instagram. It looks real shiny, but also like I'm a human being. Yeah. I mean, I really, <sighs> we kind of just grew up like it is what it is like mm. kind of mentality. I don't know. I just, the only thing I'm kind of lazy. <laughs> like, uh, like, like, do you want to get up and do your schedule every single day? Oh yeah, yeah, for okay. sure. Like, I look. For, that's the thing. Like, I feel like I wouldn't look forward to training if it wasn't for the guys. Like, mm. I love training at the, at the noon sessions because like everyone's there. Everyone's like talking shit. It's a healthy environment. Yeah. But then you also get a lot of stuff done. Mm. Like everyone's there. You have a. Uh, you know, you always have questions to ask at the end, end of uh, the session and everyone's there for you. Everyone yeah. like circles up and like there's just like constant information. Mm. And uh, I feel like you can't really evolve in a, an environment that isn't like that. Yeah. Like especially at the, at the rate that like I, I guess I. Right, right. You know, evolved at. Yeah, the rate like, you're growing at yeah, for sure because yeah. it's very fast. Yeah. Do you think that it – would you say that it's you're showing up for yourself but – if you like, if you don't feel like showing up for yourself that day, you're hot, you have to show up for them. No, I mean, we don't take any rest days really. Yeah. Uh, unless I have, um, I feel like some days or I guess like every few months I'll, I'll be training so often that it's like my flows aren't very like smooth mm. and I just feel like there's a lot going on in my head. I'm not like actively thinking about a lot of stuff, but it's just like kind of an things are just snapping, or like falling into place, like how they normally are. Yeah. So uh, maybe then I'll take a day off. But aside from that, I really, I just love training. Mm. Like when you love what you do, you want to show yeah. up. Yeah. You know? No, it's but, true. Uh, yeah. Do you like? What about those people that say? And this is this is really isn't in a negative way. It's really a way to try to be helpful because ideally you love what you do and you want to do it. Maybe not you want to do every single part of it 24 seven all the time. Cause there are going to be times you're tired, you're sore, you have whatever, or like you love the sparring, but you hate cardio or you don't like wh whatever, right? You love lifting, but you don't like drilling, but you love sparring. Right. So there's different aspects of things that, that need to be focused on, but you want to do most of it. So if somebody wants to be an athlete, but they're not finding themselves wanting to do the parts of it, do you think that that's normally environment based, or it's like it's a personal thing where like, man, maybe you should try something else? Or do you hear like at B team, you've got to have people come all the time that say oh, they yeah. want to be world champions? Yeah, I mean, twenty four seven, right? Yeah, I mean, I feel like the, the thing is, if if you've if you're having that issue where things just aren't working out, or like you're trying to like get to a certain point and you've maybe you've been to a few different rooms and it's like mm -hmm. just not clicking. 
just come to B team. <laughs> no. But it's just like, I don't know. It's maybe it's not for you. <laughs> right. Well, it's kind of the common denominator thing, right? Like if you're going everywhere and having yeah. the same experience, yeah. like it may be, and that's not a bad thing. Like not everybody needs to be a jiu-jitsu athlete. Yeah. It may just mean that there's a different path that you're actually going to like more, which yeah. is really like should be the thing that you want to do most days. Yeah. Unless, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's just like, if it's not clicking, then don't like, don't put that much effort into it. Like, unless you truly believe you're going to be something, uh, God, I mean, don't do it. <laughs> Dude, when you say don't click, let me, let me clarify before people get depressed. Oh, oh, when you, oh, no, no, it's good. But when you, <laughs> no, no, when you say don't click, we're not clicking. Do you mean you're not doing well in competition or do you mean like you're not enjoying yourself? Like you don't want to be there. You can do terrible in competition. I do co- terrible in competition. Look at my <laughs> past five fights. Like I've lost all of them. <laughs> like if you're not enjoying mm. what you're doing and uh, you're not like, you don't feel yourself getting better mm. or at least keeping up with the room, mm. um, then it's like. Yeah. And when you say like, what, what if someone's like, man, I love this. I love jujitsu, but I feel like I'm hitting a plateau. What, what do I need to do to get to that next level? Is it kind of the environment you're talking about? Ask more questions, make sure you're around people that you enjoy. Uh, plateaus happen like all the time. Like it's, Mm. it's going to happen. Uh, I feel like, especially with, maybe it's just me, but like with jujitsu, I, I have like kind of phases where I have like a few set of moves where I hit all the time. And then they start to fade. My trading partners get used to it. The mm. room gets used to it. And they're like, okay, they, they know how to react or they learn the defense. So it's like a constant evolution of your game, a constant evolution of like just finding what works. And God, the jujitsu is so complicated. It is, it is, <laughs> it is. So you fo- would you say you focus on like a set amount of things for a certain period of time? And then when you start to feel a little bit of a plateau, what do you do? Do you ask new questions or you kind of take it upon yourself to study or how do you I get usually, to the next jump? I usually wait until I find something else that works. So you get excited about it. You're like, oh, yes. I want to try this. Yes. So mm. like right now I'm, I, I have like, I'm in the phase of ankle picks like this hip toss and like a few other little things. Mm -hmm. Uh, But like two or three months ago, I never did these things. I see. Two or three months ago, I was doing, uh, oh God, what was I doing? (laughs) You're like, I don't even remember. I was doing like calf slicers and like, I don't know, a few other things. But (sighs) jujitsu is about like building the right habit, I guess. Mm. And uh yeah. Yeah. This stuff is so complicated. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's why it helps too to have so many people around you that you can constantly bounce ideas off of and yeah. that are like in a room, you want to have people that are way better than you that are smashing you people around your level that you can go back and forth with, and then people that you can smash, so you can yes. try new stuff. Yeah. Right. So I feel like if you have all of those three things, then you never really run out of options because yeah. you can always ask questions. And, um, sometimes like, like mixing up your training is good. Like you can't, I can't just always go with Nikki Ryan every single day because I'll just yeah. die. Like, yeah. I, can't, I can't expect to do anything to him. Right, right. But like if I go with like some other guys and work this move, like like right now I'm trying Octopus. Okay. I've been working Octopus. I can't do that to Nikki Ryan. Right. I can do that to like some other guys. So I'm gonna, You're still we're, building we're, it. Yeah. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So build it up on like the easier guys and then – then maybe one day I'll hit it on Nicky Rock. Maybe one day. <laughs> yes. And then Craig. Yes, and then he- <laughs> Craig. Yeah, yeah. Craig is, Craig is, oh my God. Craig is, Craig is a freak of nature. I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were better than him now, though. Because of the Pedro yeah, match. Than him. He yeah. Can, he can stay away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So when you think about, man, the next 15 years, this is now, you're only 20. So this is almost double your lifetime. Next 15 years. I want to like, I'm interested in your goals around jiu-jitsu, but I'm also really interested in your goals around the way that you view yourself as just kind of a man in the world. Like you have this, the Jets Bits company, I know you focus on, well, it's interesting having Nikki obviously as your brother, because he's one of the the top athletes that done has done really well at marketing and branding himself, turning himself into a business, which as we all know, most athletes don't put that much effort into doing, yeah. or maybe they think they do, but they don't ask questions to do it better. So they're like, man, I'm not making any money. I don't yeah. really know. You know, so 
coming from a pretty unique set of people and mentors that can help you start to do that in the next, you know, 10 to 15 years. What do you view, you know, as the future of J-Rod in the moment? Of course, that'll change. Uh, well, I hope to sell a lot of jitspits. <laughs> um, We're going to do a Christmas sale. Yes, we got to do, yes, yeah, yes. we got to, well, this will be out it's, after it's Christmas, coming. but you know, <laughs> if, you, Chris, if you didn't get the Christmas sale, there may be a Valentine's day sale in your future. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I, th- I look at that company. It's, it's just like something small. Honestly, I did it because I can make enough money to, I haven't really made money off of it. Mm-hmm. I'm, well, it's brand I've new. made enough money to spend all of it on buying more designs for the people yeah, to, to cover your to, costs. Yes. Exactly. Well, and that's yes. usually how things start. That's a good thing. Yeah. 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 So I do it. Cause I like, I like them. <laughs> man. See, that's the best. Yeah. I've heard this so many times that the best businesses are yeah. things that solve the person's own problems or think like the person, something that the person wants yeah. themselves and then they just share it with people. Yeah, Cause it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. It works. It works. But, <laughs> um, I don't know about building any more businesses. I guess I can, I could open up like my own school and be like a B team affiliate um, uh, in the future. Do you uh, want to stay in Austin? Do you know yet? Oh, no. Oh, God, no. <laughs> no? No, no, no. Don't like I, Austin. I love it here. It's it's great here uh, for the time being. But uh, like once I'm like done, like with competing, mm-hmm. I'm going to go somewhere, <laughs> have a nice open land, buy some dirt bikes, okay. buy some cars. So not back to Jersey. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, no. all right. So, somewhere where there's all four seasons. I want to experience oh, all four seasons. I like that. Here, it's just hot. Hot like, and then cold. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, it, it gets kind of cold here, but, like, I like snow, too. Like, yeah? I want to experience everything. All I wanna right. I want to experience everything. Where do you um, think you want – Where what's on the list for that? I don't know. Any ideas yet? Somewhere, like – I was about to ask Sula, but she's not from here, so she doesn't know anything about the seasons. <laughs> I think you can go to like like Georgia has all four seasons. I'm trying yeah. to think like some of the states in that yeah. area. Oh my god! I, think I saw like, the Carolinas, I, maybe. I saw uh, New York, kind of. I think last year there was like a, some like invasive species of spiders in Georgia. What? Can't go there anymore. Whoa! I'm there. What? Not going there. That's horrible. Yeah, I saw a video. All my of family's there. Someone driving uh, down the road, and there's a bunch of uh, like pole lines and all uh, our electrical poles, whatever. Uh huh. And on top of all the lines, spider webs. No way. And always you see these little dots, and they're like just massive spiders. Oh and my like, god! I'm not going there. I'm not going there. Mm, I'm sorry. My whole family lives there. I will never be visiting again. <laughs> you guys, you have to go to California. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so maybe an affiliate, but not in Texas for yeah. my, for any longer after that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but do you think you see yourself teaching? Do you like teaching? Mm, I don't really like teaching mm-hmm. too much, but it gets the job done. I think well, um, I think it's good to be able to say that because so many competitors – I definitely went through this myself. So many competitors – feel like if they want to make a living post competing, then they just have to like teach classes and have a school. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of different ways to do things now. And kidding yourself by saying like, Oh, I I like teaching. I love teaching. I'm going to do it. It's just like training. If you don't actually have the desire, then it's not to say like, Oh, you can't teach a good seminar and you can't hone the skills. You want to have the skills of being able to be a good teacher, teaching instructionals, things like that. But if you're trying to make yourself fit into this life that you don't want because you think you're supposed to, it starts to, man, your students are going to feel that anyway, and you're going to be unhappy. So if not teaching, then what do you see? I, I mean, instructionals, Mm -hmm. sponsorships. I could open up a gym. I could open up a gym and like have someone else teach. Mm -hmm. And I could do like, like, uh, like a seminar where I teach my, uh, my person that's teaching the people, like the coaches. Like train your coaches. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Train the coaches, whatever. But, uh, so maybe something like that. But, uh, I guess within the next 15 years, I'm going to compete a lot, get a lot better. Yeah, I guess main goal is ADCC, ADCC gold. Yeah, um, gotta win trials again. Though. Oh my <laughs> god, that's gonna be a mission. <laughs> seven match. I had seven matches at trials, and I had a buy as well. So it would have been eight matches. Wow. If I didn't have buy. That's crazy. That's wild. That's crazy. Mm. But um, that's really it. I want to win gold, ADCC. Um. 
God, what else? What kind of goals do you have for next This is your interview. No, no, I want to know about you. <laughs> oh my gosh. I have a lot. I have a lot of goals. Yeah. But what's interesting you seem like though. like a busy person. I, I am busy, but yeah. I like it's weird because the word busy, I, I want to say it's a Warren Buffett quote. I think uh, I'll have to Google who that mm. is because it might not be a Warren Buffett quote. So <laughs> it's like busy is the like the word busy is the new stupid or something like that or busy is the new but you're all you're always but, doing something but you're i think it's because something. people use the word busy to describe like like is it oh it's busy is the new stupid it is warren buffett yes i feel so smart right now <laughs> but i think it's i think the reason he said that is because people use busy so much to be like oh i'm so busy like yeah. to for like to increase their value yeah. like ha- like somehow having a lot on your plate increases your value, yeah. but it, I mean, what the hell is on your plate? Like you can be busy doing meaningless stuff yeah. or you can be busy or you can be fulfilled. You can be booked. You can be, um, expanding and growing yeah. like that's it. So I try to view it as, as fulfilled rather than busy, but yeah, we're doing the podcast, yeah. man. I, um, I'm back to lifting now. I'm yeah. not quite back on the mats with my knee injury yeah. after ADCC. How long has it been? Uh, how long has it been? Oh, ADCC. So September 17th, I think September, October, November, I guess three months. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What was it? Six months or longer? We, I mean, originally they told me, well, I actually released this in the first podcast, so I won't go into the whole story because these guys have already heard it, but my ACL, MCL, LCL, they said everything was completely torn and I had a tibial fracture. Yeah. Then after the MRI, and this is like a week later, they find out that my patella dislocated. So my MPFL was torn. Yeah. In the video, you can see my kneecap on the, it's gross. (laughs) It's so bad. I remember. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But luckily they, with everything going as quickly as it did, it was like, okay, we think you're going to be able to heal this without surgery, Mm -hmm. which was huge. So in that case, it's like six months to be back to um, regular training is the goal, but I should be back on the mats in a couple of weeks. I guess, well, when this is out, I'll probably be back on the mats. We're yeah. filming this in the middle of That's December. Good. So good. yeah, so it's yeah. good. But anyway, so but in the meantime, I've been able to start the podcast. I'm, I have a coaching an online coaching program that I'm launching again in January. What else are we doing? So <laughs> we're planning seminar tours, huh? Australia, Australia tour. Where are you going to go to Australia? Yeah. Uh, where uh march march yeah mm. come on we'll go ride kangaroos i'm gonna go over there <laughs> I, I plan on going in the summertime i, I think thought you I were scared go. of spiders spiders dude <laughs> I, i'm gonna stay in the city where there's other people <laughs> <laughs> keep the animals away <laughs> yeah yeah keep the animals out of I it hope so. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but it's interesting you know this 15 year question is like it's kind of a hypocritical question because mm-hmm. if someone asked me what I want to do in the next 15 years, I'm like, man, I have a couple of big things I want to check off. But for me, blocking out entire really long periods of time like that has never worked because things are constantly changing. So you, you know, you look and you're like, okay, when I'm 25 in five years, I want to accomplish X, Y, Z. But what happens if you do that by 22? You know, that's good. Like you don't want to cut good. your, you don't want to sell that's yourself really short. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's great. Like I almost, uh, it's nice to have like some things time blocked as far as like, okay, I think from 20 to 25, I want to get a couple of these things done. Mm -hmm. Probably by 30, I want to accomplish, but having those timelines and keeping them flexible, I think is the key. And then always like assessing, like, what do I want to do? But also what's making me happy today? Because if those things don't line up, then I probably should take some emphasis off of that huge goal. If I don't, if I'm not actually willing to do the actions today that get me there, like if that's not a life that I like, then why am I putting that on that list? Just because I think it's supposed to be there. Yeah. You know, yeah. so 15 years is a really long yeah, time, it is, it is, yeah. you know, been good short term, short term uh, stuff and long term stuff is, is good. Yeah. And then yeah. leaving it open to change. Like I yeah. used to think that if you put something on a list, like it was a lack of integrity to take it off. Because it was like, oh, I said I was going to do that. I'm going to do that. Yeah. But really, as you evolve, your goals should change. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, if sure. you just think back to when you were 15, it's like, okay, when I'm 25, I'm going to, right? I was just saying, I didn't know what to do. So. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, man, what if something happens when you're 23 where you're like, oh, my God, I didn't even know that I loved this. Yeah. But I love it now. And now, like should I not, should I take this off my thing? Is that, is it, is it a bad, I, like it, does it mean that I'm a bad person if I don't say what I wanted to, if I don't do what I said I wanted to do when I was 20? Yeah. Man, because sometimes, yeah, you got to stick it out. You got to grind. You got to be like, okay, I said, I'm going to do this. I want to be a man in my word. Okay. But sometimes things change and, and you have to allow yourself to be flexible yeah. if you want yeah. to live a life that you like. This mm-hmm. is suddenly gone pretty deep. Yeah. I, <laughs> that's why we're here. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> 
It's good. It's good. So, man, I really appreciate you being on the podcast. I The last question I want to ask mm-hmm. you is since we talked in the beginning, we've had all this talk about your life, like, one of the th- one of the reasons I like to have people on is because I want to talk about jujitsu, but I also want to talk about the person behind the wins, right? Or the person behind the mats, yeah. really, you know? And so when we think about what a, having a grip on your life means to you, what you said at the beginning, which was kind of like, in your own words, is like, you know, being present, staying connected to the people around me and kind of going on a day-to-day basis. When, after all this conversation, is that the same or do you have a different answer? Or what do you think? Like, to feel like, man, I have a grip on my life. I feel good. Things are going right. Um, I'm proud of who I am. What does that feel like to you? I'd say it's about the same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I always stay. What's the word? I don't know. Level headed, I guess. Mm, like I'm grounded. Always kind of, yeah. Yeah. Always, always the same. Even. Nothing really affects me that much, but. Uh, mm. I think that's good. So you're not highly emotional. Is no, what you're no, telling no, 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 no. You don't sway too much. Yeah, no. Someone asked me if I, I, I've never like seriously been angry. Really? Like I've never. Never. I don't have that. You've never like have. yelled or raised your voice or no, anything. No. Even as a teenager, like with your parents. No, I mean Nick and I would like bicker when we were younger, but aside from that, like. Wow. See, I'll get like frustrated if like something isn't working in uh-huh. jujitsu, but like aside from that. Man, that's that's really in- <laughs> that's, that's really, yeah. That's really interesting because I think a lot of people are under the impression that to be a competitive athlete, you have to be super super intense all the time, which means you're swinging up and down. I mean, I guess it's who you are, right? Like Nikki Rod is just like Nikki Rod all the time. Like <laughs> are he's you who, yes. Like <laughs> who you see like on the camera, that's that's who he is all, all the, the time. time. Yeah. But um yeah, I'm a different person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> because I know you, so you're talking about like wrestling and the mental toughness that mm-hmm. gives you. I think a lot of times people equate mental toughness or aggression or having a high gear with being hot headed too, or like mm-hmm. having that big energy where you're no. like, you know, you're no. getting emotional about stuff. Uh, this is actually really frustrating. Some people think that the angrier they get, the more <laughs> they'll like be able to beat you up. That's not how it works. Yeah. Not, I feel like if I'm more angry, that would just make it worse. Like that would end up worse for me. Like mm. more things like wouldn't work out when I'm competing or whatever. Like, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. Mm. <laughs> so even headed, yes. cool, yes. like collected, chill. Chill. even chill. Yeah. <laughs> the chill competitor. I like it. Yeah. All right. Well, man, thank you so much for being on, Jay. It was great to hear more about right. your story. Make sure you guys, uh, I'm getting better at this. Follow, subscribe, leave a review, share it with someone. It would be helpful too. And when you guys leave a review, I really, really, really want all the feedback. So let me know what you liked, what you did, how much you hate him. No, I'm just kidding. How much you hate me? No, it's fine. Please, please don't tell me that. Wait, maybe maybe in a DM. Um, (laughs) Sul is going to be like monitoring my my messages now to to go for hate mail. No, so really let me know what was helpful and what's not. What questions you want to hear? because I want to make sure that I'm bringing as much value as I can to you guys. So I need to hear how things are going for you and share it with anybody you might, who might find it um, interesting or what do you, what do you call, so what do I call Jay? Interesting, but inspired. I'm inspired. inspired. For, I've been, Sula's, in, Sula's inspired. Sula's yeah. inspired. She's, <laughs> she's pretty tough cookie. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> she hates everybody. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, yeah, inspired. But I think especially, man, like <laughs> people just want to know you off the mats. That's yeah. really what it is. And I found that one of the reasons I started the podcast is because I think most of the questions that I get are not about jujitsu. Like, I mean, some of them are for sure, like technical questions, yeah. but most of the time it's like, do you get nervous? Like <laughs> oh, yeah, people yeah, ask yeah. that, you know, I'm sure you get those yeah. DMs too. Like I'm going to compete. Like, do you yeah. get nervous? And I'm like, yo man, we all the same. Yeah. Like, yeah, I get nervous. Yeah. So if you want to know, you know what, like it, just the fact that you're out mountain biking, like that's interesting, yeah. you know? So anyway, um, hope you guys enjoy guys enjoyed the podcast. I definitely did. Super happy to have you on Jay. And, uh, I definitely will not be coming by and training anytime soon because it sounds hor- <laughs> horrible. <laughs> Maybe just hanging out. I trained a B team one time. I don't know if I was there. it. I wasn't there. I wasn't there. Yeah, I think I was here like commentating for Flo or mm-hmm. something, and I, I, and I jumped on the mats, yeah. and Flo came and filmed and, yeah. and whatever. But everyone was super nice. Yeah. I will say that before we get off is, 
um, as a woman, as a female black belt, it's like you have to be pretty like careful when you go train places because sometimes oh. people are like, oh, like yes. a girl black belt. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> On top vibe. of the girl, like – there's always tension. There's always tension. There's tension. It's and it's yeah. like, let me prove, like, let me see how good yeah. I really am against, yeah. you know? And so you got to, man, and everyone at, at B Team, like, whether it was, like, the more well-known people or the people I didn't know yet, like, everyone was super cool. The girls, yeah. the guys, like, um, it was just super friendly. Like, That's it good. was really, it was really great. So if you guys are in Austin, then you, you can go, you can go train there. Don't worry. You won't get, you won't get made. Well, actually, <laughs> you probably will get made fun of, but, <laughs> but in a lighthearted way. <laughs> um, but anyway, all right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in and make sure you guys check back, subscribe to see the next episode in a couple weeks.